Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of How to Get Good at World of Warships and today on episode 16 I'm going to be talking about secondary battleships. This is a question that has come up recently for me a whole bunch of times during streams. You know, how do you play things like the Georgia? How do you play ships like, you know, the German battleships if you're building them for secondary builds? So hopefully during the course of this uh, video you'll have a better understanding of how to make these ships work. The key thing, first of all, about any secondary build is to have an appropriate captain. This generally means that at the very least you're going to want a 14 point captain taking advanced firing training and manual secondaries. With an additional 4 points, I personally would take concealment expert because that will help you get into position, but I've heard some people argue for the use of fire prevention to reduce the amount of fire damage that you can take from HE spamming ships. Um, personally, I will always prefer concealment just because in certain situations where if I cannot really use my secondaries fully, I can still be in somewhat effective um, normal battleship. So let's continue and talk about how do you actually play your secondary battleships. Well, fundamentally, secondary battleships, first of all, require you to get into range because generally secondary armament will be effective about starting around 11 kilometers and getting closer, obviously. So it does require that. But more importantly, it is paying attention and finding some kind of opportunity, whether it is some hole that's opened up in the enemy lines, somewhere to push in and allow your secondaries to begin to get the farm on. What you do not want to do, and this is very, very key, what you do not want to do in a secondary battleship is YOLO in and die. This is one of the major things that you see people do wrong when they're playing their secondary battleships. They will go, well, I'm a secondary build battleship, I'm meant for close range, I'm just going to go and charge in and get as much damage as I can, and then I get focused to death, oh well, then I've done my job. No, you haven't. A good secondary battleship, in a lot of cases, will almost require you to fully use all of your heals, you know, you're really going to be um, putting yourself in positions that make the enemy very, very uncomfortable. Because here you have a ship that is hard to damage, that is, you know, hitting you with a lot of secondary fire accurately and getting damaged that way, and it's just not fun for you. So Georgia, which is one of the uh, American secondary battleships along with Massachusetts and Ohio, of course Georgia has an advantage that has a speed boost so it can go fast, but generally the idea is the same. They're tier 8, 9, and 10 battleships. They have 32 millimeter plating, so the only real things that are going to be a threat to you is Musashi and Yamato, things that can overmatch you. Um, of course, HE spam is a concern, but proper positioning usually can mitigate at least some of that. Okay, so what you'll see me do here in Georgia is I'm heading to the north. North is an area, first of all, you'll notice that there's a bit more cover. Going south is generally not preferred for me, um, because if I go south, it's just open ocean, which means there's no way to really close the distance without being essentially spotted and spammed at by enemy HE spammers. So going north, there is going to be some island cover. I can utilize this island cover to uh, not get spotted. Also, if things are a little bit nasty for me, I can utilize that island cover to get back into some degree of physical cover so that enemy ships can't exactly just, you know, continue to spam me with impunity. Alright, so you'll see what I'll do is I'll push up quite aggressively. I'm keeping an eye out for uh, where enemy ships are, so I can tell that there is, and by the way, you have to forgive that follow camera, it's just completely gone, uh, it's not follow camera, shelf flight uh, camera, it's just completely messed up. But you'll notice that, for example, I'll see that to the north right now, there's only really um, a Nisenau, a Nelson. Nothing else is really up north right now. There's an Alaska and there's just one Cleveland. So this is a pretty good uh, weakness, let's say, in the enemy lines for me to try to exploit. And I will try to do so. And of course, in this particular case, I'm doing a lot of actually pushing, right, as the Georgia, because I can see there's a hole for me to exploit. The other thing, of course, is that with a secondary battleship, and this is another key thing, is sometimes you have to be willing to turn away. Okay, so you have to look at a situation and very, very carefully. Sometimes it will require you, before you know you get engaged, to turn away and be ready to kite away. And so what you're using your secondaries for in that kind of situation is to um, engage targets as you're retreating. This applies a lot more to German battleships like the Friedrich de Grossa, which doesn't have really good forward firing angles. Now, with Georgia in this case, I've got some pretty solid firing angles, and you know my secondaries are pretty good. Enemy team really isn't resisting too much yet, so currently I'm still pushing in. But at a certain point in time, I'll notice that there is going to be some danger. So Nisenau, maybe if he gets aggressive, he charges me with torpedoes, okay, I don't really want to get super close to him. 
And, you know, maybe I'm seeing the Azumo coming up. If the Azumo comes in aggressively as well, maybe that'll be a problem. So here is one of the major things about playing secondary battleships. Angle and stop. So this is one of the things that you often see people do incorrectly because they won't stop. They'll they'll charge in and they'll keep charging, keep charging until they die. Secondary battleships require time to get their damage. Time that really can be gained by angling correctly, letting your secondaries work, let your secondaries farm, use your primary guns to add in extra damage, and go from there. Um, in Georgia's case, she's only got six main guns. They're punchy, they can hit kind of hard, but you know, only six guns. So patience, right? Let your secondaries do work, let your primary guns do work. And sometimes you might even, you know, divide your attention, let's say, you know, primary guns engage one thing, secondary guns engage something else. Um, in this case, you'll see that the Nelson has basically just played like totally incorrectly, full broadside in front of me. But I see the Azumo coming in. I can see there's going to be an evolving threat, right? So what I do is I turn my secondaries onto, well, eventually I'll turn my secondaries onto the Azumo when it gets into a slightly better angle for my secondary guns, while I continue to engage the Nelson with my primary guns. Azumo, of course, uh, I can't overmatch that, so if he angles, it's going to be a little bit more of a struggle for me. But you can see now my secondary guns are raining on the Azumo. I'm actually reversing even, because I continue to maintain that distance while continuing to shoot at the Nelson, because the Nelson continues to offer me a broadside here. And the thing about these secondary battleships is there's sometimes to push, sometimes to stop, sometimes to push again, sometimes to stop again. The timing is very, very, very key, okay? You have to give your secondaries time to do work. This is true for the American secondary battleships. It is also true for the German secondary battleships, um, if you're playing them as a secondary build. Uh, German battleships can also just be played as standard battleships as well, and depending on some situations, that is a preferred playstyle as well for some people. Uh, for me, a lot of times, I do still prefer playing German battleships as just normal battleships that are kind of durable, they offer that um, bulk and armor. But again, I've also played them as secondary battleships, and again, played correctly, they can be still very effective. Okay, so Izumo starting to push in towards me. At this point in time, judging by what I'm seeing on my side, because I don't really have any other teammates really, the one cruiser that was here at the shores, he went and got himself killed. The rest of my team is still very far back, so I'm thinking... Okay, situation here isn't great. I've got my secondaries on this Izumo, but Izumo really right now could probably just come in and either ram me or something like that. I'm expecting some sort of even trade um, because I'm looking at the situation. I don't really want the trade, but it, if it happens, it happens, right? And this is something, something you have to be okay with as a secondary battleship. You sometimes just have to take the trade. That's just the end of it. Um, Izumo looks like he's turning in, so I'm... You know, keeping my eye out on the Alaska in case the Alaska decides to reverse and maybe try to help out the Zumo. Um, you know, got my secondary still going. Um, got some good hits already. Some good fires. Waiting for this Zumo to decide what he wants to do. It looks like he's just trying to do a drive-by. So you'll see me try to angle in a little bit, angle in a little bit, and then right as I get to around here, I'm just going to flap him out of existence because why not? Okay, two fires. DCP that, okay, if you're in a secondary battleship. All right, obviously Alaska is very, very close, but this Alaska probably didn't expect for me to actually survive that. So as soon as I get around, now here you'll see me starting to push very aggressively. There's no more stopping, slowing down, holding back, because a hole has massively opened up to the north here. And this is time for me to take advantage. So get secondaries on, get my primary guns on, angle the Alaska, obviously very important because I want to keep myself alive as long as possible. Give my secondaries a chance to get some additional damage. And this game is already very much taken care of. Their northern flank essentially by now has completely collapsed. Um, this Alaska is getting pushed out by me. He's getting pushed out in front of my team. He's not going to last very long. And uh, that probably is going to be it for him. Let me see if I can get one more good shot into him. So already, just this last little period of time, engaging Nelson, engaging the Zumo, uh, engaging Alaska, whatever, 170,000 damage. So already a solid amount of damage here. And there is my high caliber award. So absolutely uh, a good secondary game. Um, and this has been pretty consistent for me when I played Georgia as a secondary build. Okay, and so the enemy team has a few more ships left, a Surrey, a Shores, a couple of little cruisers. They're kind of running away from me. I'll get some last remaining sort of chip damage here and there. Um, I don't actually get much, which is, you know, unfortunate. But hey, I think I end up with a pretty solid 180 uh, in this game. And once I'm done this, and so this is the Georgia's playstyle, I will go cover um, a German battleship just to show you how the German battleship differs a little bit when you are comparing it to the American battleships. But all in all, the lessons are still the same. You pick a flank, 
you wait for an opportunity. Patience is kind of key. Position yourself obviously correctly at the beginning um, so that your angles, you're not easy thing to kill. Your secondaries can get some shots in, uh, but your main goal is to stay alive until the correct opportunity presents itself. Okay, so Surrey here is basically down to like nothing for HP. I don't actually get this kill because those shells arrived just ahead of the last shell that was going to hit the ship, but there you go. So game, pretty solid game all around. Moving on to the German battleships, and I've picked sort of the worst one out of the bunch. This is the Tier 9 Friedrich de Grosse, and this is not a very good battleship in a lot of ways, but again, played correctly, she can still be quite effective. I've got her spec for full secondary, so that's manual secondary and uh, advanced firing training, along with concealment expert. So you'll see how she is sort of different to the Georgia. Um, of course, remember this battle is sped up, so of course she looks like she's going faster, but really she's a 30 knot battleship where Georgia can be pushed quite a bit further. All right, so with the FDG, again, very similar to the Georgia, begin, you know, you go and pick a flank. Uh, in my case, I'm picking one where I know there is some degree of island cover um, to the north, especially there's this nice little island right here that juts out at T7. So this is a nice little bit of cover. So I'm going to come over here, and what my primary goal here is to assess what enemy ships are coming my way. So I see a Sinop, I see a Georgia, and I see Rune, and look at what I've got, and I've got a Colorado, a Surrey that looks like he's not really in this fight, and an Alaska that's turning away. So this is already, in my opinion, going to be a defensive fight, at least for the beginning, if the enemy team decides to push him quite aggressively. Oh, actually Surrey's coming back in. Okay, so I've got an extra cruiser here to help. But still, this looks like a much more defensive fight, because um, the Georgia and the Sinop, if they push correctly together, um, they're far harder for me to deal with, especially because what I've got over on the other side here is a Colorado, and a Colorado really is food for a Georgia and Sinop, assuming they play correctly. So what I do as a Friedrich de Grossa is I'm going to turn myself away, and this is one of the things I was talking about. You turn yourself away, you enter this kiting position, you stop. You kind of position yourself as this bulky HP with good armor, and you let your secondaries do some work if they decide to push around. So had the Sinop and the Georgia decided they were going to push around, they were going to come around to a secondary battleship that was going to be somewhat angled and or very easily to get uh, angled to them and raining down secondary fire on them. Now Georgia actually decides that he doesn't want a part of this because you'll see he actually decides to turn away. So, okay, that's fine. That's good for me. Um, taking a look as to see what's going on here. Take a shot at the Miyoko here. My dispersion with my primary guns in this game was actually not great. Uh, in fact, I think I only get one really solid salvo near the end of this match, which you'll see uh, is kind of a little sad, but hey, it happens when you play German Battleships. Still, this is going to be a good game, I can promise you that much. So, get a little bit of secondary hits in, get some primary hits in. Nothing massive so far. Okay, you'll see that the Georgia is deciding to cut into the middle, and it looks like the Georgia is deciding he's going to go somewhere else. So really, this side is now just a Sinop and a Rune. A Sinop and a Rune, I should be able to take, even though if a Sinop plays correctly, it's still super annoying to kill off, and the Sinop is going to play correctly. You'll see the Sinop is going to spend the entirety of this next little engagement pointing the bow at me. So I'm going to enter kiting away position, um, and let my secondary st start to do some work. Eventually, though, I'm going to have to push, because this flank has suddenly become the weak flank, right? Because the enemy team has stopped committing ships on this side. They've just gone down to two ships, so I have to get myself turned around. So obviously I don't want to turn around when I'm really close to a Sinop in full broadside. If I get too close, then it's just too easy for a Sinop to clap me for some big heavy damage. Tr a Russian battleship, you know, good close range dispersion. So what I want to do is pull a little bit of distance and get my ship turned around. Um, again, I'm going to pull a little bit more distance, allowing my secondaries continuing to rain down on the Sinop. Okay, here we go. Looks like there's another salvo here. Okay, so when the salvo lands, there we go, bounce off the side. I'm going to get my ship turned around here, and then I'm going to start pushing down this flank. Rune is going to be annoying, uh, because German HE penetration is pretty annoying, but like, not my main focus right now. If I can shoot at him to get him to sort of dissuade him to go away a little bit, that's fine. Um, but you'll see him pulled out to about 12 kilometers. Sinop is not super, super accurate in most cases, as the range sort of increases a little bit. Um, do a quick turn. And then I'm going to push down quite aggressively, again, getting my secondaries back in on the target. Already farmed some decent damage with the secondaries. Um, using my primary guns to help out as well against the Sinop. Mostly shooting at the little piece um, at the bow, which I know is a spot I can overmatch on this particular battleship. So you'll still see with my main guns, I'm going to get like these salvos where I'm like 10, close to 10k damage, like 9,000 something. 
mostly my secondaries are going to work. Okay, so Luchin does pop for me. So again, I have the uh, perks of having a nice uh, captain that has that additional skill. If I don't have it, it really, like, it's fine. You don't have to have it. It's just nice if you do. Um, but I don't normally play this ship based on that captain skill proccing. It procs, it's cool. If it doesn't proc, eh. The ship is still effective. Okay, going to engage this rune now. And Rune is desperately trying to kind of get away from me too. Um, you know, obviously this cruiser is going to try to kite away and pull distance. And this is where I do like having Concealment Expert. So some people have said, like, why do you choose Concealment Expert? Because, you know, some people say, hey, if you have uh, fire prevention, then you can take less damage from fires. Right, but if the enemy ship can't see me and they're not spamming me with HE, then I'm not taking damage anyways, right? So this is where I generally prefer having Concealment. Because without it, I will be easily detected by the rune, so the rune can really shoot me, drop off the text, shoot me again, drop off the text, shoot me, right? Otherwise, the rune has to get a little closer, and if he has to get a little bit closer, his danger increases as well if he decides to shoot at me, because then as soon as I see him, he's going to be at a closer distance, easier for my guns to hit. Okay, see, I'm spotted again, but now this is within 13.6, so does the rune really want to take his chances at this kind of distance? Generally, the answer is no, um, because a lot of battleships can hurt you quite um quite well, let's say, at this distance. Of course, you're going to watch my guns disappoint me like non-stop this game. <laughs> okay, that was a decent salvo there. 11,000 damage. Uh, got my secondaries, but I mean, like, that full broadside. Should have got a blap there. Anyways, secondary starting to rain down on the rune as the rune is going to try to kind of run away from me. I can overmatch his armor, so of course I'm going to continue to shoot at him as he's running away from me. And I'm going to get some decent damage here and there. Yep, there we go, 6,000. And I'm noticing, and at the same time I'm engaging the rune, I'm also paying attention to what's going on on the other side. The enemy team has a big group of battleships on their cap. But this is the weak flank. So this is the flank with all the holes and all the gaps. So I absolutely must take advantage and push in here and see if I can turn this battle uh, in favor of my team. Because so far, if you actually look at the team list, it's pretty balanced so far. Pretty balanced game. Uh, nothing has really separated the two teams. See if I can kill this rune here. Oh, God's sake. <laughs> oh come on all right now obviously the rune is at the sort of the max limit of my secondary guns so not always getting the best hits here especially because the rune is actually maneuvering Let's see if i can oh, hit the border okay paying attention to the battleships over here on the in their cap there's an alsace nagato the shokaku is here as well shokaku of course is a big worry for me because that is a cv that has uh, armor piercing dive bombers and if the CV uses them correctly, I will get hurt. Um, Enterprise has dropped, I believe, a squadron of fighters on my head and dropped them early enough that they should do something to these uh, Shokaku dive bombers, and they do go after them, so that's good. Um, get my main guns aligned on the Shokaku, and a major disappointment. I've got my secondaries on it, but Jesus, look at that main gun salvo, just terrible. Um, so here in a situation with the HP I've got, um, I've burned my last heal, so I really just have to kind of get maximum impact out of what I have left. I'm well armored, so I can still angle to things. And get my main guns here on the Nagato, who is basically full broadside. Um, and then I'm deciding, you know what, I'm just gonna go ram this out. That's actually a beautiful main battery self against the Nagato. It's the only good one I had in the whole game, right? Triple Citadel, kill the Nagato, go after the Alsace here. Um, and with my armor, it's not easy for the Alsace to kill me. I get the ram off, high caliber. And you can see by doing that, where I go in, I take out two of the uh, battleships, including their tier 9, which is you know one of their big battleships. And it really does sort of open up the game for the uh, ships remaining on my team. Um, in fact, we do lose a Colorado here, but all in all, you know, we still have an Azuma, we still have an Enterprise, who's shown himself to be somewhat competent in dropping things here. Uh, we still have this Oster Gotland, who is going to be a torpedo threat with his fast torpedoes. So enemy team, you know, they're not super comfortable, um, and we do end up winning this game uh, reasonably comfortably, in fact. Uh, the Azuma gets off... Uh, bit more HE farming, uh, get some more damage off, and really does just settle this game for us. All in all, to rehash the secondary battleship playstyle, pick a flank at the beginning, look at what you're likely to face up against, decide whether or not you're going to become a pushing flank or a holding flank. If you're a holding flank, turn your ship around, point your stern towards them, get angled, get your secondaries out. Uh, if you're, it's going to be a push flank, then, you know, push while angled, get your secondary farm on, stop you know, when the opportunity presents itself so that your secondaries can actually do work. And then one final thing is that when the opportunity does present itself for you to turn yourself around and push, 
do that and when you absolutely have to push aggressively push aggressively do not yolo in do not throw your ship away your ship is far more valuable over the course of the game if you can get all your heals off and you can get that farm on you can get your main battery to continuously do damage that is the role of a secondary battleship anyways folks i hope you have enjoyed this how to get good video if you have any questions please leave those in the comments section below Otherwise, I wish you the best of luck as you go out and try to play your Georgias and FDGs and, you know, other ships like Massachusetts, whatever. Um, you know, I hope you enjoy the playstyle more once you actually um, do better with them more consistently. Aside from all that, take care of yourselves. Be good, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.